Guys, I do not suggest you anymore to wear Dior Sauvage. It is too well known. That is not that good. Instead, I recommend you to wear Fabergé Cellini. It's smelling better, it is lasting longer, and it is getting more compliments. Okay, all my sexy dirty boys, grab yourself a cup of coffee, put your bullshit in a good position, and I'm going to scissor you into the middle of next week. Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about a fragrance which you really, really rarely hear about in the fragrance community, and I've, I've just got myself a bottle of the aftershave version. It's astoundingly good stuff. I am so over the moon. I, I kind of just bought it because I like the bottle design and the name, and I wasn't necessarily expecting very much, but I've been absolutely blown away and astounded in the week that I've been trying this one out. So here we have Fabergé Cellini from the House of Fabergé, first released in 1980. As I sometimes do with these POV videos, you're not going to see me in the video today, I sometimes give a history of the house that created the fragrance so let's just let's do just that with the house of Fabergé so the house of Fabergé is a jewelry firm they were founded way back in 1842 in St Petersburg Russia by Gustave Fabergé uh, they were famous most famous I'm sure many of us have heard of these for designing elaborate jewel encrusted Fabergé eggs for the Russian czars so the firm was a really really illustrious firm many of us will have seen these ornate so-called Fabergé eggs which are highly sought after and very 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 valuable nowadays. Uh, along in 1917 came the Russian Revolution, which would of course not be kind for a luxury goods firm which had uh, made things for the Tsars. They were nationalized, I believe, in 1918. And therefore, that was pretty much the end of the Russian proper original version of Fabergé. But in 1924, the grandsons of the original owner, Alexander and Eugene Fabergé, opened Fabergé and Chi in Paris, making similar jewellery items and adding the name of the city to their firm, calling it Fabergé Paris. And now, I'm not going to give you a whole in-depth history of the house of Fabergé, but there was a bit of back and forth and some legal stuff went on here and there. And um, the, the exact lineage is a little bit unclear of this name. But by the uh, 1960s, we have a completely new entity of Fabergé, which uh, was under the direction of Jewel. George Barry, and he had acquired the rights to use the name, at least as far as creation of perfumes was concerned. And they launched the incredibly popular Brute from Fabergé in the year of 1964, one of the most famous uh, fragrances for men ever made. And this was a hugely, hugely popular, rather affordable fragrance, very much a traditional aromatic fougere fragrance. The fragrance is still made, but no longer under the Fabergé name, under various different license names on different sides of the Atlantic. You can get very, very, very cheap aftershave versions, which you can pick up even in your your local supermarket here in the UK and there is a slightly more expensive eau de toilette uh, special edition or special reserve edition which is really rather good that you can still buy with the original rather beautiful blingy old style medallion bottle but let's turn to our release so Fabergé's uh, Cellini was released in 1980 so it was I th as far as I can tell I think it may have just been their second fragrance release for men don't quote me on that but certainly the advert that we can see here says it's the first really new men's fragrance since Brut well that's a little bit of a claim because they, they seem to mean fragrances over overall but you can see a rather nice selection there as you can see it's got a, it's called a cologne there so not clear quite exactly what the strength was as a soap version i've got the aftershave splash here i'm not sure when it was discontinued but i have seen an eau de toilette version out there i'm sure it's been discontinued for many many years so let's let's talk about the fragrance itself i picked mine up on ebay for a remarkably affordable 19.99 for a very slightly used 50 ml aftershave and uh, as i said i wasn't expecting great great things but I was amazed when I actually put this one on skin, which I have it on skin now, and it's a stunning, stunning fragrance. So let's let's summarize this one. You can pick this up well, up only probably on eBay or somewhere secondhand. Um, yeah, I was lucky in my price, but you can find bottles around about the, the 50 mil or 100 mil aftershave splashes for you know under 50 pounds or 50 dollars if, if you shop around. There are odor toilettes out there for a higher price. They seem rarer. I, I haven't seen one with cologne written on it myself actually, but I'm quite happy with my aftershave splash, which has good longevity for me so far. Let's talk about the note listing for this remarkable fragrance on Fragrantica it's listed as a citrus aromatic fragrance so I'm not sure about that uh, it was the top notes are lemon lavender bergamot and anise in the mid you have geranium cedar patchouli carnation cinnamon jasmine and cyclamen and your base notes are musk musk 
Alaska Leather Amber. And hey, uh, other websites describe it, other people in reviews are describing it as an aromatic fougere, and I would tend towards that description myself. I'm just going to actually give you a couple of things that people have said in reviews, because I do find it quite useful to dip into for Grantica and Base Notes and get an overview of what other folks think. So if you have a look at the first review that comes up on Fragrantica, you get somebody called Mystic Man, and he says Fabergé Cellini is the progenitor of Tuscany. That's a great, great aromatic fougere from Aramis from 1988. The resemblance is startling. Dry citrus, current culinary herbs like oregano, thyme, rosemary, and a warm ambery base. It definitely conjures up a sunny day in the Italian countryside. And he finishes by saying bellissimo, so a big fan there. There's also some great reviews, actually rather more on uh, base notes, which can be a little bit better sometimes with the reviews. I'll just give you very quickly two of them. Somebody called RC Avs says, wow, nice anise note mixed in a late 70s fougere style. Aromatic formal, but never cloying. I guess it was considered a casual fragrance at the time of its launch. I'd say Aramis Tuscany was definitely inspired in Cellini, no doubt about it, but I vaguely smell here something I also detect in Aramis Devin, a great fragrance. Here's a really good base notes review with a lot of reviews up, and his name is Darvant, rather nice picture there. He reviewed it way back in March 2017. Here's what he said, into the Fougere's Wild. Fabergé Cellini for men is a quite refined but really strong freshly aromatic barbershop classic Fougere, exuding a fascinating fresh aura a la Aramis Tuscany man, a lot. Keep, they keep saying that, Dracar Noir, Cuba, Black Men, never tried that, Cuba, Paris, or most Azaro Porom. I detect this master, mastering initial soapy anisic accord of aromatic herbs, fresh lavender and citrus immediately supported by leather, patchouli with a quite soapy Swedish leathers effect by a refined, a sharp floral core, mostly carnation under my profane nose. Overall flowing down towards a mossy ambery leather base, dandy, classy, tailored, leathery, soapy, aromatic, dry, anisic lavender, musks, synth, ambergris and soapy leather are dominant throughout while the florals are restrained, angular and accessorial. I detect an undeniable spicy presence and some misty earthiness, but the juice is almost, is mostly an aromatic soapy, mossy, ambery, leathery fougere with a radiant spark of gentlemanly dandy class, supremely masculine, durable on my bastard skin. P.S. Dry down is darker, vaguely smoky or stare, quite soapy, mossy, but an all at once angular and assertive a la uh, YSL Vintage Reeve Gosh. Oh, need I say more about the smell? I really agree with with everything they say it's definitely got that anisic soapy lavender classic fougere vibe a li- yeah it will remind you a little bit of things like azaro Perom. i prefer it to my vintage bottle of that uh, i do think it is similar to aramis tuscany but i wouldn't say that overwhelmingly is the one it reminds me of most the opening actually reminds me of the original shipra version gucci Perom from 1976 with that lovely bright um, citrus thing almost a hint of aldehydes to my humble nose but definitely this classic classic barbershop thing somebody in a review actually compared it to Patu Porom from uh, Patu, the real legendary one that you can never find. I can't say I've tried that, but he says it's right up there next to that, which is incredible for what was such an affordable, humble little fragrance as Cellini. So if you like the old school classics, the classic classic aromatic fougere stroke citrus aromatic but i think fougere is a better description of this one but if you like the old-fashioned kind of stuff i love and this of course will have your real oak moss in there in greater proportions than they can use today i find it absolutely brilliant i find the longevity decent not amazing but perfectly decent considering it's an aftershave it's okay Uh, i've actually only splashed it so far i haven't put it in a decant and sprayed it but you could obviously do that go a little bit heavy on the sprayer you'll have an absolute classic that no one else is wearing fabergé cellini the house we all know because of brute but no one knows or very few people remember this beautiful fragrance guys i think it's an absolute under the radar gem and as of today definitely one of my top 10 favorites from the 1980s a forgotten masterpiece don't miss it if you see it for a great price let me know what you think about that in the comments down below as ever whatever you're doing in life let's project and sometimes life may stink but we can always smell good don't forget I've got a special code for you. Mr. 15 gets you 15% off at myfragrancesamples.com. There's a link in the description. They ship in North America. That's USA, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Great guy there, Mark, and an amazing range of fragrance samples. Don't miss out on your code, Mr. 15, for 15% off.